Permanent stain smear for stool analysis is an essential step in the detection and species identification of intestinal protozoa. Okay, now we are going to prepare PVA fecal suspension, which is the first step in preparation for trichrome stain. This is done by mixing five drops of PVA, as shown here. This is PVA, usually milky in color. One, yes, five drops. It will not harm if it's six, no problem. Yes, enough. Leave it inside, leave it inside, yes, exactly. And now, with the wooden applicator, we have to add stool sample. Two, three times, depending on the stool. Yes, another one. If this is diarrheal stool, you can use a stir pipette. Two or three drops. Mm -hmm. Good. Exactly. Enough. So usually the ratio of PVA to stool is three to one. Close tightly the stool sample. Close the open door. And vortex here. A few seconds, vortex. Enough. And now let's stand for 30 minutes. Next step is to prepare fecal smear as follows. Pour the mixture on a paper towel and allow to stand for three minutes to absorb the PVA. So here is the stool. We can do this, let's say, by wooden applicators. Perhaps you add more. Can we add more? Deep. Go down. Go deep. Uh-huh. Very good. So we have to wait for one or two or even three minutes. Yes, we have to smear it. Of course, we have to make sure that the smear is not too thick, not too thin. And this is usually done by seeing the letters on a printed page, like for instance this, the letters on a printed page, not necessarily reading, but you can see them. If you can read them, then it's too thin. If you can't see them, then it's too thick. Well, this depends on your common sense and your experience. Okay, it's preferred that you do two or three slides so that if one is lost, you have a reserve. Allow them to air dry either at 37, which is the incubator, for one hour, or you can do them overnight. Okay, and then after one hour and overnight, we had these smears here. Yes? Sometimes one would like to prepare fecal smear directly from fresh stool, not PVA stool. And this is done by spreading with wooden applicator fresh fecal material as shown here. Spread it. It's spreading. Exactly. So you have to spread, not too thick, not too thin. Spread the other one, please. This is fresh stool. Almost diarrheal. Now we have to allow to air dry. Then after it's completely air dried, it might take half an hour maximum, then we have to put them in Schauden's fixative. You put it inside. Both Schauden's fixative and PVA have something in common, which is mercury chloride is a major component for both. Now we have to incubate for 30 minutes, half an hour. Okay, now after 30 minutes, we have to take the slide which was dipped in the Schauden's fixative and put in 70% ethanol for five minutes. We have to dip, block on a tissue paper, and put in 70% ethanol.
ethanol for five minutes. One thing should be said here, which is that fixation in Schauden's fixative or PVA is the most important step in the whole trichrome staining procedure. Because poor fixation with PVA or Schauden's fixative will result in distorted morphology of the parasite or the protozoa in general. After fixing with Schauden's fixative and washing with 70% ethanol, go directly to trichrome stain step. That is, skip the iodine ethanol step as well as the two successive 70% ethanol steps. Okay, now we start with a trichrome stain. First of all, we have to place the fecal smear in a 70% iodine ethanol for 5 minutes. Okay, so these should be dry smears at least one hour in an incubator or overnight. Okay, the aim of this step is to remove mercury chloride, which is a major component in PVA and also in Schauden's fixative. If you don't remove the mercury chloride crystals will appear in your smear at the end. So first step is end. We have to slide should be drained between solutions by tipping off on the slide of the on the side of the jar and touching the edges on a tissue paper several times. We go to the next step which is 70% ethanol for five minutes and the aim of this step is to remove iodine from the previous step. If iodine is not removed, this will cause predominantly greenish background. If background appears overwhelmingly green, time can be increased by three minutes to become instead of five minutes, eight minutes. Okay. So we will incubate for another five minutes. Okay, now we go to step number three, which is again placing the slides in 70% ethanol. But before this, we have to drain again and we have to clean slide to prevent carryover and maintain volumes of the reagents. Again, this is a second step of washing to remove iodine. Okay, well, that's the first one. Now we come to the stain trichrome staining step. Yes, now we have to put them the slides in the trichrome, but before this again we have to tip on the sides of the jar and plot on tissue paper. This is a really important step also. And after this we have to put in the trichrome stain for 10 minutes. Ten okay. Again, we have to take the slides out from the trichrome stain after 10 minutes or even 15 minutes. We have to tip them against the side of the goblin jar and then plop them on a tissue paper. Now you have to put them two dips only, one dip, second dip, and that's enough. This is just to destain, and here five dips to get rid of the acid, because acid might continue to leach trichrome stain, thus negatively affecting the stain. Now here we have to again tip a yes, blot on a tissue paper. And now we go to the dehydration step, which is three, minute, three minutes. Okay, so we put them here for three minutes. And this is the first dehydration step. Yes, okay, then we, go, we move to the next dehydration step, which is again, Three minutes in absolute ethanol, 100% ethanol. Just please plot them. Yes, on the sides. Exactly. And then 
insert in the jar, staining jar. This will stay for three minutes. This step is just for dehydration. Now we come to the xylene steps. A second dehydration step consists of two xylene dips, each one seven minutes. And the purpose of this, of these two last steps, is dehydration, exactly as in the 100% ethanol that preceded these two steps. Now we have to clean again, yes. And then the second one, the second slide, at the side of the jar, and then plot on tissue paper to prevent carry over and maintain volumes of these reagents. Very good. And for seven minutes. If the xylene becomes cloudy or there is an accumulation of water at the bottom of the jar containing xylene, discard the old reagent. Clean, dry thoroughly, and replace with fresh xylene. So the xylene should not appear cloudy. Now we come to the last step, the tenth step in the staining procedure, which is again repetition of the ninth step, which is dehydration of the slides in xylene for seven minutes. It can be between five and ten minutes. It's not a problem. And even the steps, which are the 70% ethanol here and the step 70% ethanol here, plus the two dehydration ethanol steps and the two xylene ethanol steps, these six steps, they can be extended up to one hour if you want, or even 24 hours, but the other ones not. Okay, we have to plot it again against the tissue paper. Insert in the final 10th step, which is xylene hydration. Now we have finished the staining procedure, the 10 steps. We take the slides out of the last jar, goblin jar, and we plot them on a tissue paper again and hold them vertical to dry them. The xylene doesn't take much time to dry, a couple of minutes and it's dry. These two jars here and these two jars here. Make sure that they are closed, tightly capped to prevent evaporation. Okay, so now we wait for a couple of minutes until the slides are dry. To view them under the microscope, we have to place a drop of immersion oil on each of them and leave the oil, one drop, and leave the oil between five to 10 minutes to allow oil to sink and soak into the smear. And then after 10 minutes, we have to add cover slips. It's much better if you have 22 times 22 cover slips. Photography on the slide, which you don't see by naked eye, can scratch your lens. Microscopically, you have to examine stained smears under oil immersion lens, 100X. And you have to examine at least 200 to 300 fields before declaring negative. How does the parasite appear? The cytoplasm of the protozoan trophozoid will appear blue-green, sometimes with a tinge of purple. Cyst will appear more slightly purple. The background material usually stains green, providing a nice color contrast with the protozoa. Nuclei and inclusions such as chromatoidal bars of amoeba species, RBCs, bacteria, chocolate leaden crystals, medium body of giardia will all appear red, sometimes tinged with purple. However, ideal conditions may not prevail every time, and protozoa or background may tend to be orange or light brown. This is left to your judgment and to whether you are still able to give proper identification of the parasite.